Hey guys, how's it going? Elliot here again, and in today's video, we are going to be trying, and over the next couple of videos, we are going to be trying to turn this console into a tiny little portable handheld. The aim is to try and fit it inside uh, one of these. Um, I have actually made a little video um, already, kind of talking about what we're going to be doing with this. Uh, this was sent to me by um, a company called Gearbest, and this is the motherboard that was inside it. Um, it's a pretty small thing. This is everything. So you can literally just sit that down and plug everything in and this will work. Um, two things which we're going to have to definitely sort out is going to be uh, both of these right here. We're going to need to take them off and then uh, we'll have a little bit more um, room inside. Uh, the inside of the actual cartridge, we're going to have to shave away some of the little bits in here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is cut off all of this plastic here and over here as well. And then that should give us uh, enough room to fit everything in. I'm probably going to just do that with um, a pair of these. Although later on we will need a Dremel to actually drill out the holes for the controller. Here's one of the controllers that it came with. You can see that the, all of the wires are just individually sold. Um, and will then be soldered to the respective uh, piece on here. So that's not going to be too hard to do, I don't think. Um, but we'll have to uh, work that out in a little bit. But this board is really, really nice and fits perfectly inside of here. So I'm not going to have any issues um, with actually having room for this thing. I don't think the screen as well is really, really small. So this is the kind of screens that um, people use in Raspberry Pis, which is another thing that I thought maybe we could do if this uh, little video goes well. And if you guys like this kind of video, a lot of the videos I do are more kind of reviews and... Um, and like mods as opposed to actually making my own things. But here's the screen inside. I think if we just cut away this plastic here, and then under here as well is the screens, uh, the, the, the buttons for the screen. This little board just controls the, the screen's um, settings so you can change the language, you can change the brightness, you can change the contrast. Uh, but this should pop out quite easily. There we go. And there's the tiny little screen itself. And then at the end of this is um, your AV and your power. So I think what we're going to do is just set everything up and then uh, we'll give it a little test. This is basically the whole package. We've got our little screen uh, board here, the controller board. We've got our actual screen. We've got our motherboard. The cable is um, plugged in for the controller. Here's our little on switch and reset switch and our little uh, LED. And then here's our controller itself. So if we press this one, you can see the screen powers up, and we're not getting an image for some reason. There we go. There's our image. You can see that the whole thing works. If we select Super Mario, uh, you can see there Super Mario. And the whole thing is pretty compact at the moment. Obviously, we're going to need um, to, to change a couple of things, like we're going to need to amend the shell. <laughs> So the first thing I did was took my little wire cutters and just took off some of the plastic that I knew that I wasn't going to need. Um, it was probably a better idea to do this with a Dremel, but I didn't have a Dremel yet at this point. Very big thank you to uh, Dan, who's a good friend of the channel, for lending that to me. I decided that I was going to keep the actual controller and just cut it up into a slightly smaller form factor. That meant that all the supports for the buttons were still going to be there, so I just cut out a big kind of rectangle and then I'm going to glue the controller in and then we'll fill it and sand it and spray it after. Once the actual buttons were able to fit in, like a test the size of it, I decided that I needed to actually cut down the PCB slightly of the controller. You need to be really careful to not breathe this stuff in. Um, I definitely should have been wearing a mask. Uh, I just trimmed the edges off and that was enough. Then I decided I would test fit to actually see if everything fits in. And as you can see, it's beginning to take shape. And at this point, I was getting really, really excited. The next thing I was going to then do was drill three little holes for the controller for the screen. Um, I should have probably done this again with a drill, but the Dremel was all I had at the time. I 
thought I would show you what we've done so far. So our power switch is all um, wired in, which is nice. And we have our controller also wired in as well. And it's gonna be slightly difficult for you to see the screen because it's quite bright, but you can get an idea of it just there. So if I select Super Mario, and I'm doing this all in the controller down here, and it all works very nicely. So that's nice. We've uh, been able to shorten the cable. We've changed the power switch up. The next thing to do is actually gonna be removing this connector here. And uh, after that, I think I'll try and sort out the AV out and then hardwire that in so we don't have to have this connector in as well and um, just solder the screen straight down to the actual board itself. It was then time to hardwire the screen to the board. I tested the continuity just to check which pad was for which wire and then basically just went ahead, removed the um, output jack and soldered the screen right on. I wasn't too sure at this point whether or not the screen would have enough power to work. As you can see, this is me testing it here and it didn't work. Um, so Sean SGM4306 pulled up a schematic for one of the chips that was on the actual board itself and then we were able to basically just bypass the 12 volts and then power it straight off of a 5 volt input. We soldered it then to the back of a capacitor on the board which was 5 volts and that got it working. And this is where we are right now uh, with the actual NES Classic handheld thing. As you can see, the whole thing is actually inside. The little switch is just poking out the top for now, but it will just be integrated into there. We've got our menu buttons on the back. Uh, nothing's held together yet. I'm not entirely sure um, how I'm gonna hold this together. And that we've got the USB power just coming in, which means that the board is actually kind of, the main motherboard is sitting slightly lopsided. So I can't push the screen down because it's in the way. Um, the USB cable is hitting the back of the button board. So for now, this is what it looks like, um, but I'm gonna sort out the power. Obviously I need to sort out the aesthetic and that's pretty much it. And then it's, oh, and the speaker. Um, for that, I just need to order an amplifier. Um, we did solder a speaker on and you could hear it, but it was so quiet um, that it was basically impossible to hear. So little switch, turn it on. Here's our um, system. All the buttons work. The buttons feel really, really nice to press. They're not held down yet at the moment, um, but when they are, uh, it will be even nicer to press and the buttons will be just the right height uh, to actually um, press them properly and feel comfortable. So yeah, I'm so happy with how this has turned out. It's turned out looking exactly like I wanted it to look. When everything is done, it will all be able to fit into this uh, nice little case. Um, as well, which is going to be quite exciting, or at least it should. I haven't actually tested it yet. The buttons might not fit. There we go. Yeah, it does. So we'll have a tiny little uh, portable NES um, classic to play on. And I might even design a, um, a box art for it, which is like the same size as a NES cart, and then put a little box protector over it and whatnot. Anyway, that's all for another video. Uh, in the next video, of course, I'll finish the aesthetic, glue everything into place, and um, I might even have to spray paint the, the bottom bit, bit as well. And that's going to be it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you're new, please subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.